Welcome to Introduction to Logic, Unit 2, Lecture 2, Part 2. In this short video, we'll learn about simple deductive arguments based on the logical relationships between the four categorical propositions. We'll also look more carefully at the concept of existential import and see how this affects immediate inferences on the Aristotelian and Boolean models of term logic. In our last video, we learned how to put the four categorical propositions together to form the square of opposition. The A and E, the universal propositions on top, the I and O, the particular propositions on bottom, the affirmative propositions A and I to the left, and the E and O, the negative propositions, on the right. We also learned how the organization of the categorical propositions on the square created four logical relationships. Contradiction, where propositions have opposite truth values. Contrariety, the relationship between the universal affirmative and universal negative, where they both cannot be true, but they can both be false. Subcontrariety, where they cannot both be false, but they can both be true, and subalternation, where the truth of the universal implies the truth of the particular, and the falsity of the particular implies the falsity of the universal. We also learned how these relationships allow us to make immediate deductive inferences based on assuming a truth value assignment for any one of the propositions on the square. So, if we assume, for example, that the universal affirmative is true, we can make immediate inferences about the truth value of the universal negative, the particular negative, and the particular affirmative in virtue of the contrary, contradictory, and subcontrary relations, respectively. Of course, we will not always be able to determine the truth value of every proposition, as in this case. We know that in subalternation, the truth of a particular claim does not imply the truth of the universal, nor indeed would the truth of the, of the particular affirmative apply, imply a truth value for the particular negative. So in this case, A and O would remain logically undetermined. Now let's think about some actual categorical propositions, and we'll see exactly the same thing. If we assume that all dogs are mammals is true, then we can immediately infer that no dogs are mammals must be false. Similarly, with some dogs are not, not mammals, and of course, some dogs are mammals would have to be true. We can also change the orientation and have the very same outcome. If we take all dogs are mammals to be true, we can conclude that no dogs are mammals is false. Taking it one step further, we could put the argument into standard form, and we can say that this simple deductive argument is valid. We can see, of course, that it's an argument, because it's composed of at least two statements, one of which follows logically from the other. We can say it's valid, because the conclusion, which in this case turns out to be a universal negative proposition, is contrary to the premise. But notice in the conclusion, we've stated it is false that no dogs are mammals, which indeed would have to be true if we assume that all dogs are mammals is true. The very same thing would be true of, an ar of this argument, because the O proposition is in the contradictory relationship to the A proposition. So if it's true that all dogs are mammals, then it must be true that it's false that some dogs are not mammals. Finally, in standard form, we can validly deduce that some dogs are mammals because of the subalternation relationship. Now, this brings us to an important point which we mentioned in, the, in a previous video, but which we need to spell out more clearly now. The reason that we can infer the truth of a particular affirmative from the truth of a universal affirmative is because Aristotle restricts the use of categorical propositions to actually existing things. Therefore, we say that for Aristotle, universal propositions have existential import. 
That means he takes the universal claims to be assuming the existence of the entities in the terms of those propositions. In this example, of course, since hobbits do not ex actually exist, Aristotle would say that the argument is fallacious. We can't make any claim about the particular thing if things of that sort don't exist at all. Another way of thinking about this is an empty set cannot tell us about any of the individual things that would exist if that set were populated. If it's an empty set, it's an empty set, and therefore nothing can be said to be true of its members because there aren't any. This is the existential fallacy. It's this concept of existential import of universal propositions which makes Aristotle's square of oppositions so robust, which is clear when we compare it to the Boolean square. On the Boolean square, there is only one defined inferential relationship between categorical propositions, and that is contradiction. For Boole, universal claims have no existential import. That is, they don't imply the existence of anything at all, so it's impossible to have a subalternate relationship. But it's also impossible to have contrary propositions, since a non-existent entity can't imply the contrary of that non-existent entity. Problems also arise from the concept of existential import for subcontrariety. The problem of existential import was recognized as early as the Middle Ages, but we're not going to worry about this since most of the work that we'll be doing is going to assume the Aristotelian point of view. But remember, we can still commit the existential fallacy if we try to draw an inference about non-existent entities. Such simple deductions will always be invalid because, according to Aristotle, we can't know anything about non-existent things, so we certainly can't derive logical truths about them either. The four defined logical relationships on the Aristotelian square of opposition allow us to make valid deductive inferences immediately. That is, with only one premise, so long as it's a categorical proposition, and so long as it does not assert the existence of a non-existent thing, we can derive a conclusion validly. We call this immediate inference because there's no need for any further information to mediate between the premises and conclusions. In the next video, we are going to begin exploring arguments that do require mediation between the premises and conclusions. These mediated deductions will be in the form of the syllogism, that is, a deductive argument with two premises and one conclusion. So, be sure to watch the next video, An Introduction to Categorical Syllogisms.